All right, hello again, everyone. I am back with another quick tutorial. This is going to be on the fundamentals of the three basic materials, uh, material maps that you will need for a good material. Uh, whether it be like special any materials, you're going to need the diffuse, the specular, and the uh, uh, normal. Jeez, and I'll show you what each brings to the equation. So first we're going to have, oh also I'm very sorry I haven't released the uh, time lapses like I had before. I bought a new 30 inch monitor and recording on it is a pain because the file size is insanely big and I have a small SSD for just where I record my uh, temp files onto. And yeah, it is amazing monitor but it makes me want to record less on this 1920 monitor that I have. Anyways, so first what we're going to do is just quickly set up a scene. A plane which is 100 by 100, it doesn't really matter whatever units you want um, because this is just a quick UV thing. And we're going to add that, or modifier list, excuse me, I have the hiccups for some reason. Didn't drink too much tonight. And add a UV map, keep it planar, and as you can see, it should just go around your plane like this. And then rotate your plane 90 degrees. You can do it that way, or you can type in 90, I guess, on the X for me. So we just have our plane set up that we're going to show. I'm going to quickly turn it to black so I can see it easier. And in the description, there will be three maps that you should download: the specular, the uh, normal, and the wood. It'll be an imager link, and it'll be under an album there. Um, and you just download all three. Just right-click on them and save image as, or save link as. I can't remember. Or maybe you can even save the entire album on imager. It's really nice for images. Anyways, so I'm just going to go in the material editor by pressing M and stay in the slate material editor. And let's quickly create a uh, standard material by right clicking standard, materials and standard. And we will go under these three the diffuse, the specular color, and the bump. So, first we're going to go over the diffuse. The diffuse is a color, is the color of it. The diffuse is the color of the object. So, what I did there is I just dragged up from the diffuse color until it prompted me with a map. So, let's do that again to show you guys. Do it. Diffuse color bitmap, and then wood color. There we go. And I'm just going to apply this by selecting this material, selecting my object, and assign material selection, and show shade material in viewport. And there you go. There is color information on that. So if I hit F9 to render it out, you can tell. And let's actually create a quick camera for this so you can always get a nice view on it and I won't have to change anything. Uh, let's tile this up a bit more too. So we're going to UV tiles to Details too. Let's use horizontal and views vertical for some reason. And there we go. We have a nice view for it. Control C to create a camera and F9 to render it out. So I like that camera, so let's change around it. There we go. Render it out. Perfect. So there's our renders. So that's just the basic color information of it. And under under your maps, you can change, you can make the color information of it uh, be influenced more or less by this map by dropping this diffuse color down as you can see double clicking to open this preview window and zooming in on it you can see the difference of 100% and 0% influence from the map that I inputted so next was the specular color now the specular color is turn on bitmap specular color is the reflectivity of a the reflect reflection color of the areas of the object. So it's reflection color of an area of an object. So if I double click this to open it up, you can see that this object right here will reflect much more white, this much more black. However, you'll see when we render, nothing really happens. That's because we don't have any specular level in here. So what you can do is you can also pump your specular map into your specular level. As you can see, it'll pop it up there. Or what you can do is in the slider here, you can up your specular level like this. And as you can see, the specular level is becoming more and more, well, shiny, more reflective. So I'll leave that around 50. But also what goes hand in hand with specular is because they're in the same little area, is this glossiness. And as you can see, when I up the glossiness, the specular level becomes more and more precise and less soft. More and more, a harder, more uh, precise reflection instead of a softer, more, I guess, dull reflection. So it's more of a reflection, think of a comparison between a wood reflection, which is, it is reflective, but let's say you have a nice little paint varnish on it, it won't reflect your face, you won't see your face in it. However, if you have a mirror, it'll be a very precise reflection of your face, um, but it won't 
but it won't reflect everything in a very soft way. So wood is sort of halfway through that. So about 15, about 25. I mean, this doesn't matter. It's just showing you that this is a map, and this is how you get a specular thing. So you create a map of the specular color, where white is the most specular and black is dark, and that allows you to have a reflection of it. So if I hit render, you can see the specular there a bit. However, it's really hard to see without the uh, or with this diffuse color is still there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to break this link by unclicking the diffuse color here. And this is just the specular color. And I'm also going to make it a bit darker. So the reflections are a bit more, uh, I guess, a bit more easy to see. So we'll hit 25 for the value of it. And when we render this out again, this is just the reflection of the material. So this reflection of the material, you can see it very easily, is that's where the light is reflecting off of the material. And now if we turn on our diffuse color again uh, and hit render, we can see that can't really notice as much, but it is there as we've shown from before by turning off the diffuse color. Now next and lastly, the um, most, and in my opinion, not the most important, but if it's not there, the audience will notice it, is the bump. So that's good drop in the bitmap and the normal. Normal and bump are kind of interchangeable, especially for this example. So the normal material, what it does is it's a purple and blue, uh, I guess, not segment, sequence, just purple and blue segment that shows the change in the direction that the normal is facing. So in a 3D object, a normal is the direction away from the polygon. It's like a tangent, but you know, if you ever took math, that's what it is. Um, it's tangent to the polygon. This changes the direction that the normal is facing, and this is by an angle of whichever, comparing if it's blue or white, purple. Purple is a higher change in angle, blue is a less change in angle. That's just from the one that this outputs. And this changes up the look of it by reflecting light off it differently. So if we turn it on, and we'll leave the bump at like around 50, you can see the bump changing up here, and we'll turn the diffuse color back on. We render it out. You can barely tell the difference. I can tell the difference because I've done it before. However, an easy way to show you how much difference this shows is I'll turn off the diffuse and specular color, and I'll drop the opacity down to zero. Now what this is, is the light reflecting differently off a zero opacity object, and you can see how bumpy this object actually is. There is no light change. You can tell that from its very uh, uniform purple, or <laughs> very uniform gray light. But you can tell that there's depth to it. You can see depth to it just by the bump map. And now we'll turn on the specular color. And now you can see how the light will change based on it too. So this is reflections of the object. And you can tell that there's no diffuse color. The color is not there. The color information I've completely disabled by disabling the map and also turning the color, the opacity down to zero. I can bump the opacity back up. As you can notice, it's kind of harder to see. So if I bump the opacity back down, you can see that this is just the information of the normal change and the specular color of how reflective the surface is. Then we'll turn on the diffuse color again, and we will up the opacity, and hit render, and there we go. It's a nice, pretty simple object that you can see there's detail in the bump right here. There's detail in the specular while it's reflecting light here. Can't really see it with just a basic default lighting system that uh, Max offers us. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a lighting rig, and I'll show you this lighting thing. So drop this down, and oh, I'm still on my camera, so I hit P to go back into perspective mode. And let's create a nice little camera, or a nice little light. So what we're going to do is lighting is a standard light, and a target, oh, just an omni light. We'll click it right there, move it in position, hit S for snapping if you want to. Let's move it into position right about here. Really close to the top right, so you can see some high speculars there and some low speculars somewhere else. And we'll go back to our camera and we'll hit F9 to render again. As you can see, there is a lot of thing here, and this I want to fall off. So click your Omnilight, click into your uh, click into your modifier stack, sorry. And under the far attention, attenuation, jeez. Not up far attenuation. 
yeah, that's far attenuation. Drop our end to a bit more, so we start to about 50, and our end to about 150. Now 100, just so the color falls off, so you can see the difference of it. As you can see, it's much more specular up here, and let's zoom in on this a bit more, actually. What let's do is take your camera and move it, ah, no, it's not, yeah, move it up there closer. As you can see, there's much more reflectiveness here. And as you can see, there's a bump map there as well. You can tell down here where there's less information from the color, more information just from the light change. You can tell there's more of a bump right here. Now, one thing to know is this is a very basic material. It doesn't look great because materials and rendering engines. So if you go under a render setup, materials and render setups are very intertwined. These two are, are very, very intertwined in the ways of the lighting and materials. Those are the, you can't do one without the other. However, this tutorial was just a basic tutorial on how to, on the three basic material types and how they affect the object itself so you can know which ones to use where and uh, how you should use them. But those three object, or those three material types, map types, uh, the normal, the specular, and the color, or the diffuse, are very important in the way of creating just a good looking texture. The rest of the things will fall around it if you have those three basic textures to it. Anyways, uh, that is all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about three maps and material types. Sorry I haven't done a tutorial in a while. I've been working on my portfolio to get out and again I got a huge monitor and I don't really want to work not on the monitor to record videos for you guys. So it's a catch-22, but I love doing the videos for you guys. So I don't know what I want to do. Anyways, also I'm running out of ideas for more advanced tutorials. Um, I don't know why I've just been running out of ideas. I don't, my mind's not working as great. So if you have anything you really want to know, uh, post in the comments. Post in the, I guess I don't even know what else you can post. Yeah, post in the comments, and I will certainly help you out with it. If you have any more fundamental things that you want to learn. Um, I'm certainly open to that because, again, I've been using this for a while and I should be able to answer your questions. And anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys soon. Cheers.